A nine-year-old boy released from the hospital after he was shot in downtown Seattle tonight. How police are still searching for the suspect. A new report shows a leader of a neo-Nazi group has ties to the inland northwest. We look into the group called The Base and why they're connected to Ferry County. Voters in Seattle can now vote using one of these, but county leaders say it's not coming to Spokane. How do we make a process happen and make it secure? Make sure and get your phones out now. We want to know what you think. We're still in line for some daily rainfall across the inland northwest. So I'll detail what days will have the most rain. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan and I'm Whitney Ward. We begin tonight as a Nazi terrorist network attracting a lot of national attention recently has purchased land in eastern Washington. That's according to an investigative report published by The Guardian last night. Our Casey Decker read that report. He joins us now live in the newsroom to break down exactly who these people are and why they're here. Casey? Yeah, Mark Whitney, the group is called The Base. It's a network of violent white supremacists with cells all around the world. And The Guardian discovered its leader dreams of an all-white ethnostate right here in the Northwest. The Base, a network of violent racists that's drawn national headlines recently. Seven members arrested last week for actively planning terrorist attacks. The Base is actually a rough English translation of Al-Qaeda. One member caught on tape talking about derailing trains, killing people, and poisoning water supplies. The neo-Nazi network stood out to investigators because they moved beyond rhetoric into actual militant preparation. In this case, for that pro-gun rally in Richmond. They packed food and supplies, including a gas mask, intending to load their truck, quote, for the war, end quote, in Virginia. Last night, British publication The Guardian published an article appearing to reveal the identity of the base's secret leader as Ronaldo Nazaro. Interestingly, they found many members of the base believe that leader might be a government agent and that some government groups believe he might be a Russian agent. Nazaro, the article says, currently lives in Russia with his Russian wife. Regardless, Nazaro, the report says, has long spoken of a dream of overthrowing the government and creating an all-white ethnostate in the Pacific Northwest. You might remember last year, rumors the base was planning to train members in military tactics at a camp allegedly in Stevens County. Those rumors don't appear to have much panned out. But now, The Guardian's reporting found the base did purchase land in nearby Ferry County. You can see the parcels here, 30 acres of basically nothing, so secluded that Nazaro said no utilities would ever be connected there. It's just about 20 minutes north of Republic. What the base has done with that land, we don't know, but the county's website does still list those parcels as owned by a company called Base Global. I reached out to the Ferry County Sheriff today. He was unavailable for comment. Whitney, Mark. Casey, thank you very much. New at six, the nine-year-old boy who was shot during the downtown Seattle shooting was released from the hospital today. He's been recovering at Harborview Medical Center after being shot in the leg. Now, police are still looking for two suspects involved in that downtown Seattle shooting. They say the two suspects do have prior criminal records. In fact, between the two of them, it's a combined 65 prior arrests. Hmm. A third suspect was shot and treated at Harborview. He was later arrested. Court records show all three men have ties to gangs in that area. One woman died in the shooting and seven other people were injured. Coming up later in our show tonight, we'll explain just how that shooting may impact Washington gun laws. Well, as the snow begins to melt in Spokane, we wanted to find out how the new water absorbing pavement on Sharp Avenue near Gonzaga is holding up. The city of Spokane spent two million dollars and four months of construction on the project. Then this stretch of the stretch rather of Sharp reopened in the fall of 2018. Ideally, the pervious pavement will help with black ice since rainwater cannot sit and freeze on the pavement. We talked to one Gonzaga student who walks and drives regularly on Sharp Avenue. She says there is noticeably less snow on the street, but ice is still a problem. Definitely a lot less snow, but it was still icy. <laughs> like when it was snowing really hard, everyone would just kind of walk really slow across this thing because he didn't want to slip. 
So you can see the difference actually between the water absorbent pavement and regular pavement. The street to the right shows more water pooling than it is on Sharp Avenue. The treated pavement on Sharp is expected to help prevent new potholes from forming as well. That's because the water can't pool on top and then freeze and expand the road. It is a noticeable difference, isn't it? Is it is interesting. All right. Well, we have made it to the weekend. Finally, touch and go there for a while. <laughs> yeah. it looks like the trend of warm and wet weather will continue. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick is in now, of course, for Tom Share with all our weekend details. Hey there, and I'll tell you what does really good to help melt some ice, a little bit of sunshine. And we had a little bit of it in the afternoon hours, but now that the sun has set, we're actually seeing a little resurgence of some shower activity, especially in North Idaho. It almost looks like it's kind of getting disturbed by Mount Spokane and then moving off to the east. So Coeur d'Alene, Rathdrum, Hayden, Spirit Lake, most likely seeing some light showers for at least a little bit here and uh, scattered showers continuing tonight and into the day tomorrow, but at least our temperature is still fairly mild, still in the low 40s in a few spots, including Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, Pullman and Moscow at the moment. Even Lookout Pass has been fairly OK today, just wet road conditions as opposed to icy. A good signal that it has been mild for January standards. Same thing over Snoqualmie Pass, still raining pretty heavily off the Cascade Passes, but at least it's rain and not snow. So only minor delays if you have any mountain pass travel plans for the weekend. A few rain showers here and there, but not a hundred percent washout. So coming up timing what hours of the day will be wet as opposed to dry. So that way you can plan around that for this weekend. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you. Seattle voters now have a new way to submit their votes for an upcoming special election. They can actually cast their ballot on their cell phone. And while that may seem extremely convenient, it could also bring up some issues surrounding cybersecurity. Our Shana Waltower spoke with a local auditor on why Spokane County leaders don't plan on using this method. Yeah, it's Seattle's newest option for the ways that you can vote. You can actually access your ballot online. You'll hit a button and be able to vote just from your mobile device. Now, while that is debuting over on the west side, Spokane County leaders say it's probably not something we'll be seeing here anytime soon. And it comes down to cybersecurity. It might sound convenient at the surface, but looking at the risk involved makes the idea look a lot less appealing. There are so many issues happening with attacks and hacks and distortions and interceptions of data that we just cannot take the risk of having a large scale voting process. Mobile voting has been something state and county leaders have been talking about for years. But the discussion keeps coming back to making sure nothing gets in the way of a voter's selection and the elections office. We really like the concept, but again, it comes back to the issue. How do we make a process happen and make it secure? Dalton says hacking scares are too common to trust the voting process to a system that uses internet, email, or cell services. We cannot guarantee that whatever file or packet um, re is received by us is what was actually sent by the voter. Leaders are hoping that web security systems will become secure enough to support voting by phone. Now, Seattle isn't using the new method for all of its elections. This is just for a small Board of Supervisors election. Shana Waltower, Crem2 News. Well, Idaho currently has about a thousand wolves throughout the state. These are newly updated numbers from Fish and Game. It's actually the first time now in five years those numbers have been updated. They say the, popul the wolf population peaked last summer with more than 1,500 wolves, but then went down after hunting season. Fish and Game took 11 million photos to compile all that data. A bill to end daylight saving time is in Idaho is back on the agenda. A similar bill was introduced on the House floor last year but failed. Supporters of the bill say they are tired of the time change and think it serves no purpose. But others like the semi-annual time change saying it's beneficial for outdoor activities. Well, the October deadline for Idaho drivers to get the star card is getting closer, but new numbers yeah. from the Transportation Department are not that great. So far, 245,000 drivers have gotten the star card. Uh, the IDT or ITD's goal is to hit that goal of 500,000 drivers by the deadline. Once the requirement goes into effect, people will need a star card if they want to fly even on a domestic plane. That's unless you carry around your passport or you have an active military ID.